Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Morgan and this is my channel Pisces Paperbacks and today I'm going to talk about my favorite books of the year. Before I start, I do want to say that these are not all books that I rated five stars. When I do my ratings, I do take into account like objective like writing and pacing things. So even if I absolutely loved a book and it's in my favorites, it could be like a four or four and a half star book. And I just want to say that because I didn't rate all of these five stars and that's kind of weird, but we'll see. Maybe I'll bump them all up. Maybe at the end of every year, if they end up on my favorites list, I will bump them up to a five star just out of on principle. These are also in no particular order. So the first book I want to talk about is Fangirl, which might objectively be my favorite book that I read this year. So maybe I shouldn't have started with it, but I, I don't know why I loved this so much. I really, really don't. I can definitely see why people think Kath, the main character of this book, is kind of annoying. Um, let me also tell you what it's about. It is about uh, twins, Kath and Ren, who start their first year of college and Kath is struggling with, you know, just change and their family not being all together and especially that her sister is drifting away from the fandom that they both love, which is the Simon Snow fandom. And she writes Simon Snow and Baz Pitch fan fiction and it's just about her first year of college and I honestly this book destroyed me I sobbed for hours and I like couldn't read a book for an entire week after this because I was just so stressed out about like how much I loved this and I wasn't even gonna read this because the other book I'm going to talk about is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell and I read this one first and I loved it and this is basically inspired by the Harry Potter parody that Rainbow Rowell wrote into this one that is the Simon Snow universe. Um, and I was like, well, if I love the fantasy book, like, why do I need to read like the contemporary one? I don't usually love contemporaries, blah, 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 blah. And I desperately loved both of these books. Five stars, five stars. Carry On is about Simon Snow. He is the worst chosen one to ever exist. And he is basically in his last year at Watford School for Mages. And he ends up having to work together with his roommate slash arch nemesis, Baz. And it's just a delightful book. I didn't cry about this book, but I did like tear up. And I do tear up every time I like reread the ending. I've, I've like flipped through and reread the second half of this book a couple times this year. It's just honestly, both of these perfection. The next book I want to talk about is The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. And I really enjoyed the reading process of this book. This was the first book I read this year that I feel like really reawoken my re awoken re-inspired my love of mysteries and I love like a twist ending and the thrill of discovery and just like getting the clues all together and like making guesses and this book is about the narrator whose name we don't know and he has eight days to try and figure out figure out who killed Evelyn Hardcastle um at this ball at the end of the day the twist is it's not like a surprise twist, like you find this out in the book. Um, those eight days are actually the same day spent in eight different people's bodies. So it's like he gets to see the day from eight different perspectives and kind of put all the pieces together. And it was just so good. I listened to the audiobook and I kind of wish I had read it because I would have gotten through it, like read it physically because I would have gotten through it a little bit faster. But I honestly just loved this book. There is an additional twist at the end of this book that I wasn't particularly a fan of, but it doesn't really like ruin it for me. I just kind of block out that that twist is there and then the book is perfect to me. But I did give it four and a half stars because of that and maybe I'll bump it up. I don't know, I really liked this book. This is probably one of my favorite books. I mean, obviously it's one of my favorite books that I read this year. Anyway, that one was really good. The next book I wanna talk about is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This was my first Brandon Sanderson book. It's also, I believe, one of the only sci-fi books I read this whole year, and I loved it. I bought the sequel, Star Sight, that came out a couple months ago. It's right over there. And this book is a sci-fi universe where humanity is kind of living on this planet that is constantly under attack from an alien race in the sky and Spensa desperately wants to be a fighter pilot. The only problem is 
Her dad um, abandoned a battle in the middle of a battle 20 years ago. He defected and it's basically being a coward and running away from battle is the worst thing you can possibly do in this universe or in this society. So she's kind of up against that, but it's about be, like just that whole situation. And I ended up loving this book. I saw a couple reviews where people were like, I don't know, the like, there's not really much character growth for Spensa until the very end. And a lot of the characters are pretty surface level. And honestly, I can definitely see where they were getting that, but I, desperately loved this book. I really, really loved everything in this book. I flew through it and it's, you know, it's pretty hefty. It's not, a, it's not a modestly sized book. So I read this one really quickly and I'm super excited to read the second one. I'm excited for it to be one of the first books I read in the upcoming year. And this was just a joy to read. I give it five stars. My dog is playing, please ignore her. But up next I wanna talk about Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey. This is about Georgie. She is a party clown for children and the youngest in her family desperately wants to be seen as like a serious grown woman. And the perfect way to do that is to have a fake relationship with her older brother's best friend, a newly retired major league baseball player named Travis, who is, also looking to rehabilitate his kind of bad boy image. So they fake date and it's so freaking good. This book is steamy. Like I was blushing while I read it, but I also couldn't put it down. So I brought it to work to read during my lunch. And I was like at my desk, like nobody should, <laughs> hopefully nobody can see what I'm reading because it's embarrassing. But I loved it. A lot of people had problems with the fact that Travis calls Georgie baby girl all the time. I had no problems with that. And I just really loved it. It was funny, it was lighthearted. And there's a lot of like, honestly references to it in here, which I thought was really funny. And it's a bit self, it's like self-aware. So it like knows what it is. And I'm very excited for the sequel, which I believe is called Love It or Lose It and is coming out next year. Um, it's gonna be like a different tone than this book where the couple is kind of already married and is trying to save their relationship. But this book, five stars, flew through it. I'm so glad this, I bought this on a whim. What? Come here, come on. I bought this on a whim and I'm really glad I did. Five stars, one of my favorites of the year by far. Lastly, I wanna talk about Wolf Song by TJ Klune. This book <laughs> messed me up emotionally. Basically, it is the story of a boy named Ox who kind of has a tough childhood. Nobody really expects that much from him and he ends up befriending the youngest son of the family that moves in next door and his name is Joseph and his family has some secrets, AKA they are oh, werewolves. Anyway, <laughs> I cannot tell you how good this book is. Like, I don't know if I am verbally able to express how good Wolf Song is. I haven't read the rest of the series yet. My friend Hannah has been like on me about it and I'm gonna get to it, I promise. But I read this book, I started it like pretty late at night. I don't know, I was just like in my kitchen at home doing something and I was like sitting down reading like an e-version of it, like an e-book copy. And I literally stayed up all night, just like sitting in my kitchen, reading this book because I could not stop reading it. It is one of the best slow burn books I've ever read. I feel like traditionally published books, or not traditionally published, I've read a lot of like fan fiction and stuff that does the slow burn thing really well. And one reason is because you're already invested in the characters, so you um, don't care if there's a long buildup to the relationship because you know like it's gonna be worth it in the end. And with original characters, that can be a little bit harder also to make it convincing because with fan fiction, there's already like a primary source where people can see like tension between characters. So to actually create tension between these two characters in such a, a, a really thoughtful way, I feel like the main character Ox also grows up throughout the book really realistically and just the way he thinks and the way he speaks and the way he acts I was like, that's my boy. 
he's growing up I'm so proud of him and I just love this book so much I am gonna be buying myself a physical copy really soon fingers crossed if I can like remember to do it and I just want to buy the whole series to have on my shelf and treasure for the rest of my life but th that was like by far one of my favorite books of the year I think about it all the time <laughs> Those are the six like favorites. I was gonna like do 10 or five, but then I was like, I should just talk about the ones I'm passionate about. So those are the six books that I really wanna talk about. And then I have a couple honorable mentions that I just want to drop in. My favorite author that I discovered this year besides Rainbow Rowell is definitely Tessa Dare. Like Tessa Dare writes some of the best historical fiction that I've read in a really, really long time. Very excited to explore the rest of her backlist. I read the Spindle Cove universe this year. Nice. And also the Night Huntress series by Janine Frost. This is the series that I've been reading where it's like one foot in the grave, destined for an early grave. Like they all have grave in the title and it's about the half vampire, vampire hunter named Kat and her hot snarky british vampire husband bones and honestly the thing about that series is i've read six of the seven books and five of them have been three stars one of them has been four stars i might now retroactively you know move those around to make the one that's a four star a five star and some of the ones that are three stars four stars just to like now that i have a, a better a better view of the series like how i feel about them but these books are definitely greater than the sum of their parts. They're very funny. They have ups and downs. I especially didn't like the last, like the sixth one in the series. It was not my favorite. That is definitely gonna stay a three star. But overall, they're very sexy and funny and they were a great time to read and I have one left I'm very excited for. And I have two book honorable mentions. One of them is Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. I really, really liked this book. It was kind of like eldritch horror. Um, very like otherworldly, but also a the parody of Sco the Scooby Gang, like the Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated Gang, not the Scooby Doo Gang from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But I really, really liked this book. It freaked me out. I read it at night and then was like, "Oh crap! What's in my shadows? I need to keep the lights on while I make dinner really late." And I really, really liked it. I can't put it like as a five star or. <laughs> or like a put it in my favorites, even though I really loved it because the writing is really odd. And I know that it was, it's very clearly like a conscious decision that it was written the way it is with the sometimes third person omniscient, fourth wall breaking narration and the sometimes stage direction narration and just like, um, it's just very meta and self-aware and it did really bring me out of like I was just trying to figure out like what it was talking about sometimes so I couldn't put it as a favorite even though I really loved it and I do recommend it to people who might be interested in it. What are you doing? Lastly is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. This was my favorite like twist ending from a thriller I read this year. Um, I read The Woman in Cabin 10 and I like throughout the book had a more steady level of liking whereas Behind Her Eyes I thought the middle was kind of boring but the twist at the end blew my mind. I'm still thinking about it and I like will definitely be bringing that book with me mentally into the next year just thinking about it all the time so i i couldn't end the year without mentioning that book because it was fantastically written and had an incredible ending oh this has also just been like a year of vampires for me like i talked about with the night huntress series and like the whole vampire hunting thing like i also reread twilight like the entire twilight series and i read the gender swap 10th anniversary edition i started reading the argino family lindsay sands series oh this still has the price sticker on it but basically this is like a vampire romance series and then I read a vampire like urban fantasy wrote like dark romance series that I started and just like a lot of vampire stuff so it's been a good year for vampires and I'm, I'm gonna be bringing that energy with me into the next year and that is going to be it all of my favorites from the year of 2019 I can't wait for next year I had an incredible reading the year this year and I just think it's gonna be so much fun with booktube and all my stuff and I hope you enjoyed this video if you read any of these please let me know what you thought in the comments and I will see you next time bye